when I heard the result, I felt absolute total disbelief. I couldn't couldn't grasp it initially. And then that was very quickly replaced by horror, sickness in my stomach, a feeling of nausea, and just total, total horror as to what it could mean for us. I decided to vote Remain, I suppose, a number of times during the campaign. I, I did, I was nearly always going to vote Remain, but I did at one point think, come on, listen to all the arguments, try and think about it from another perspective. And I even read uh, an interesting book that The Guardian promoted, written by someone who was a, an American academic, who was actually quite anti the EU. Uh, but really, I suppose in my heart, I didn't fundamentally change my view despite that. So yeah, probably years back I decided. How I feel today is incredibly sad. That's not exactly one word, but sad. Really, really sad for the country that we used to be, uh, that I believe we still could be. Um, I think we've slipped our moorings. I think we've just taken collective leave of our senses. And I'm really very, very sad. Brexit has changed something for me um, on a practical level. Uh, we spend quite a lot of our life living in a house we've got in France and it has thrown a lot of, uh, of that into doubt in terms of the practicalities of it and so on. So what we've done since is to acquire permanent residency and we will apply for French citizenship because Obviously, we want to be able to go in and out of France without having to get visas if we're there for several weeks, months. But on top of that, we want to be able to move around the rest of the EU when we are there. I mean, at the moment, we can drive over the border into Spain, which is only about half an hour away, without even stopping. You do that at 120 kilometres an hour. And uh, I'm not sure how that would work, but eventually, if we as Brits are held up you know, in leading our life there, and plus, emotionally, I really so believe in being a European citizen and a citizen of the EU that I want to remain, remain as such. So practically, it will mean a lot of admin for us. Um, beyond that, I mean, here prices are rising and things are getting worse in the NHS, which I feel is just a complete disaster. Um, but yeah, they, they're my main worries. I, I do see the UK in a different light now. I think that um, actually before the referendum campaign, uh, we seemed like a, a pretty homogenous country. Yes, there were differences. Yes, they're talked about. But there didn't seem to be the level of anxiety, of hatred of the other that I see now. And I, one of the things that really, really upsets me is the way that the Leave campaigns, because there were more than one of them, seem to whip up underlying forces that are very dark in this country, uh, of which racism is, is a very obvious one, and fear of the other, and, and things that were really not at all to do with the, the liberal open country and certainly living in London, which is a very liberal and open city, I felt very, very uh, alienated from a lot of what I was hearing. Um, I think as a Londoner, it makes me feel more different from the rest of the country as a result of, 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 of what we saw. Um, I, I try to understand, but, but I struggle. And, you know, watching programs on the television like Question Time and listen to the radio, we're told we need to respect the way that people voted. But when the campaign started, only about 30% of people wanted to leave. So where were all these big concerns then that seemed to be whipped up? And I think there was a lot of dog whistle campaigning went on, really feeding into people's concerns. I mean, obviously now we know about Cambridge Analytica and you wonder quite how much really rather dodgy campaigning went on to whip up concerns that are probably not as founded, you know, as, as well, definitely not as founded as they should be, because, you know, 
trying to control immigration is not the answer to the concern that peoples have, people have. And I think that austerity has reared its head through the back of Brexit, really. And actually the wrong, the wrong cause is being blamed for a lot of people's problems. And there's an ugliness and a darkness that I just don't think were there two years ago. I would like to add actually a, a couple of things. Um, one is that I think since the vote, the case for remaining in the EU has become even stronger than it was. We've got the rise of very big and rather uncontrollable and dark power in countries like Russia, China, where there's now a ruler for life if he chooses to be, North Korea, Trump, etc., etc., and the rise of the far right in a, across some European countries as well. I mean, Orban just got a landslide victory yesterday um, off the back of a lot of dark thoughts. So um, I think the EU will struggle to contain that, but at least it is a force that will try and do that, that is a big force. And we, as a little country, bobbing along on our own in our little, you know, tiny rowboat, cannot possibly influence either our place in that world or attempt to influence and control the powers of others as we could, as we, could, as we can at the moment today as members of the EU. Uh, so I think that the, the case for, the, for staying within the EU got stronger in respect of that and also in the case of corporate power. Again, as a small independent country, we cannot possibly control or tend to, to temper the forces of companies like Google, who, you know, Amazon pay what taxes they want and, you know, flout what regulations they, they like. Facebook, I mean, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was asked to appear before a select committee of parliament three times and he just said, well, no. Uh, now, possibly if the EU summoned him, that might be different, I don't know, but I feel that it takes the weight of an organisation like the EU uh, to defend the rights of citizens and that we'd just be laughed out of court if we try, pretty much as Zuckerberg has done. Um, finally, on a hugely personal note, I, I think I will probably have some medical calamity on the 29th of March next year because I just cannot accept this vote. You know, I'm, I am doing everything I feel I can do as an individual, going to rallies, you know, writing letters to my MP, a number of things. And I, I just won't accept it. And uh, I will do everything I can to, to thwart it now. I mean, I just, I just think it is an absolute disaster and one that the government are making worse with their inability to agree with each other and negotiate with the EU. It's a complete calamity as far as I'm concerned. I'm not gonna give in without whatever struggle I've got left.